Now we're going to style the content inside of the section with a class of main, which is these three items here, what's trending, where to find it, and tools of the trade. These also have the SVG graphics above them. So let's go back to our CSS file. Let's scroll down. Let's add another CSS comment here. We'll call this section main. I'm also going to copy and paste this up here because we're going to have a section all as well. So we'll define some properties that will be used by all sections and then some properties that will be used by just the main section. So to start under section all, let's come in here and let's target the section element, put in our brackets, and we're going to set a padding property. We're going to set zero on the top and bottom, then a space, and then 30 pixels on the right and left. This way, any content we put inside of any one of the sections won't touch the edge of the page element. There'll be 30 pixels on the right and left. Now after section main, let's hit a few returns. Section dot main, put in our brackets. Back in the HTML, we're targeting this item here, section dot main, and we have three asides in here. And each aside has a div with a class of content. So back to our CSS, section main, we're going to set margin top. We're going to set 20 pixels on the top. We're going to set margin bottom to 30 pixels. Then we're going to set padding to zero on all four sides. Now if this in place, let's hit a return. Section dot main space aside. Let's put in our brackets. We're going to set a width here of 33%. We want to create three columns here. Next, we'll set a float property of left. This will allow each one of the individual asides to line up next to each other. And then finally, we'll set text align to center, then a semicolon. Now to see what we have so far, let's come back to the browser and hit reload. We'll now see that each one of these items will now span out 33% each, which will give us a total of 99% width on these three items. The float properties allow them to line up next to each other as well. Now one thing you'll notice is that the pixels we put on margin bottom are not being honored here because these individual items are set to float. We're going to talk more about that in a few minutes. First, we're going to target the div elements with a class of content inside of each one of these asides to give enough room for a background graphic, and then we'll come back and fix the float problem. So back in our CSS, after section main space aside, let's hit a return. We're going to type section dot main space.content, put in our brackets. First property is going to be margin, 15 pixels. Next we'll set a background. Now what we're going to do here for the background is we're not going to define a background color or an image. We're still going to use shorthand style, but we're going to start by defining the repeat. So we'll say no repeat. We'll set the X position to center and the Y position to top. So again, we're not going to set the individual images because each one of the asides will have a different icon graphic. So after the background property, let's set a space. We're gonna set background size. Now these are SVG graphics, so we can scale them to any size. We're gonna type 75 pixels for the width and 75 pixels for the height. And then we're going to set padding top to 85 pixels, which means the content inside of that div container will push down 85 pixels, giving us enough room for a height of 75 pixels. Now I want to take a minute here and explain how margin and padding works if you're new to CSS. Basically, every item has what's called a bounding box. So this h1 tag, for example, has a bounding box around the individual h1 element. This is how the browser sees that content. When we assign margin properties, we're basically setting the space around the outside of that particular bounding box. When we set padding, we're setting the spacing inside of the object. Now one thing we need to be aware of is that when you add padding to an element, it changes its outermost dimensions. Now this is important for us to realize because back in our CSS file, we set a width of 33% on these individual asides. But in the browser, we don't have any space. So if we added padding in here, that would increase the width of these individual items. We also can't margin these out because we don't have the room since each one of these items is set to 33%. We only have one extra percent on the width. So if we go back to our HTML file, 
This is why I have a div element inside of each one of these items with a class of content. What this allows us to do is reuse this particular item in any number of parent containers and give us some control when we want to get absolute sizing on individual elements. So for these three asides here, inside of our main area, this one, this one, and this one, we need to make sure that they each take exactly 33% of the width, and then we can control the spacing with this element inside. So whether we use margin or padding on this div container here, it's not going to have an effect on the width of its parent. So back in our CSS file, let's hit save. Let's go back to the browser and let's hit reload. So now with these changes in place, we still don't have our float problem solved down here yet, but you can see we have this extra space at the top of each one of these items, and we have some space between the elements because we added a margin of 15 pixels on the div with a class of content. So now with these items sized and positioned, next we'll style the headings, add the graphics, and fix our float issue here.